all the made in long have must be Luke Vincent's final 3DS game to ever come out. It came out in 2022, but it will also receive a Steam release around the same year. Now this version on Steam is pretty identical to its original with the same content. But I'll get to one new feature later on. So anyways, it's a collectathon third person shooter like game. Which you can go around collect these chips, and that's exactly what they're called. They're all called chips. But there's also enemies for you guys to fight, and there's planners mines and there's whatever else there is. They can actually shoot right at you, so you're gonna have to like take them down. So at least there's some challenge there. And it's actually one of the more expensive games he's made for the 3DS that was like 15. It's also 15 on Steam, but again, you're gonna get like the same exact content as the 3DS version. So there is really no differences except for the HD graphics. So your objective is to go around the places and collect the chips. There's 210 of them. Now, the first part of the game, the pillars, the pillar contains like, 21 levels that has five of them each. But you think you're done with that, but you're not. But you go around you, in this spaceship that looks like a beetle. Yeah, I'm not even kidding. That thing looks like a beetle. So you use that, you can go around and go to other worlds, which they have 20 of them. So after you complete those worlds, then you unlock a special place, which has a nice little secret for you guys to get. But anyways, not just chips you guys can collect in this game, but there's also weapons. There's like five of them, but you only collect four, and I only say four because you have one already, and it's already on you. And you can use the bumpers to switch whichever weapon you want to use, and one of them is a missile launcher. And sometimes you might fight some bosses, there's at least like two or three of them in the game. Some of the levels of the game are easy to get all the chips. Sometimes it's hard to maneuver and figure out what you're supposed to do. But not only that you have the gun, but you also have this jetpack thingy or whatever, this booster pack. So with that one, you actually use that to boost your speed or whatever, but you can, it's pretty handy when it comes to going on air. So you, when you jump, you can use that to boost yourself from, from falling. And also to use it to go to many different cliffs if you can't make it on whatever it is you're looking at. But you have to use your maneuver in order to figure out which kind of puzzles that you need to solve. So think of this as more of a platformer puzzle game only because you need to figure out how to pass these obstacles. There's also a hoverboard in the game too which can also be pretty handy in terms of traveling and speed which is pretty cool. But also, it levitates you in the air, so you can make it to other platforms that are far a distance. So you just need to use your brain and think about what you need to use. If the thing's far away, use the hoverboard. But yeah, this game has a bunch of places for you guys to explore. So, think of this as, a, think of this as a exploration type of game. And I think this was like a nice note to for the 3DS because this was like the biggest effort I've seen. Oh, and just to be clear, you could play this game on any 3DS model. It doesn't matter if it's the new 3DS or the original 3DS. If you guys don't have the C-Stick add-on for the 3DS, then that's okay. Because the touchscreen also offers in terms of the joystick, if you want to use it as a camera. There's no map, unlike the Herald games. But at least there was something for you guys to use on the touchscreen. But I think it made sense for this game to come out on the original 3DS. Just for everyone to have access to it. But surprisingly, despite it running in the same exact game engine as the Herald games, it runs pretty well. The game can also be played in 60 frames, but on Steam options you can choose whether you want to play in 30, 50, or 60 frames. And speaking of options on Steam, you can also play in the original 3DS graphics. Okay, now that is cool. But that's like the only new thing that was added to the Steam version, as far as I know. But sometimes the game still gets its own updates to this very day. So in order to save your progress in the game, there's these little floppy disks that you can find flying around, like the little save icon. If you touch that, the game saves. And if you exit the game without saving, well, then you lost everything. And there's nothing for me to tell you. But that's the thing about that. You gotta 
gotta make sure you're not used to Harold stuff because Harold always auto saves every time you collect the, the crowns in the game. But I think the auto save feature was only there because it ran on a new 3DS. That's the only thing I can think of. So, to make up with the saves, they end up just using the floppy disk stuff. If the stuff I told you about the jetpack and the hoverboard don't seem to help you in some cases, there are these little objects where you can jump around. It's kind of like those springs from Sonic. But also there's these teleport thingies where you can go around to another part of the area of the game. Now here's the thing too. In terms of when you guys go to some worlds where you fly with a beetle, if you don't see any chips, that probably means there's a weapon that you need to unlock there. But yeah, I believe in the touch screen that that's where you needed to use the the weapon switch only because you can't really use the the bumpers or anything else because it was specifically designed for the 3DS original. Yeah, there was an add-on for it, but that's all I can really say. And trust me when I tell you this, the price is worth it. The worlds in this game are massive, and that's basically why there's a hoverboard you guys can technically use. And let me tell you guys, this game took me close to four hours of beating the game. And see, that's what I mean by the price is justified. Sometimes the game might go on sale on Steam, but who knows when that's ever going to happen again. Now, you guys might notice when you guys play the game that whenever you keep collecting the chips, your health bar gets bigger and bigger. And that's exactly what it does. So it's not just you collecting them to open some sort of gates. You can use them to upgrade your health. It's, it's an automatic thing, so don't worry about it. I think this game pretty much, this was like the final keynote for 3DS because Luke Vincent was one of the three final developers that actually went on to make the 3DS games along with William Cage and Sun Grand Studios being the last developers to make the games before the eShop will close as of 2023. So with the potential release of Harold Reborn being poured over. Who knows if that was going to get new content or not. But this was like a worthy note of a thank you to the 3DS community or anything else that you can say. I always feel like this game is more of a the huge effort that Luke Vincent have taken over the previous two games. Sure, the two the Hero games were fun to play, but they weren't meant to be taken seriously for its time. But I think with this game... It tries something different, and instead of just being all funny and just comedic without trying to be funny at times, this one has some sort of challenge, and you really have to use your head around it in order to get these chips and beat the game. The final boss, well, it ain't hard or nothing, but there was some challenge to it, but it wasn't like too hard where I was close to dying or anything. But all I can say is that if you guys like adventure-like games or whatever, this game is definitely for you. Some people might actually consider this a Metroid-like game. I really didn't even see it, but until I collected some weapons, I guess that makes sense. But there, it wasn't like too crazy that anything Metroid-like game or whatever. But if you guys like games like this, or maybe you just want to try something different for once, or perhaps you've heard about Luke Vincent and the Herald games and want to explore different territories of him, and this is a game that you guys should start with, or perhaps wait a little later. You guys can basically play this first, or maybe last. But let's remember, this game came out in 2022 for the 3DS. And was one of the final games to come out for the system for its time. And that was all I can say. If you guys like exploration games, there's a ton to explore in this game. You might find some cool different details of the game. Or maybe you might find some secrets, but who knows. I'll let you guys start exploring this game for yourself.